every major urban hub. So New Orleans, uh, Chicago, Detroit, we're starting to see those as emerging hotspots and it's not unexpected. You know, the way that we work in this country is we travel to each state. Everybody has family in another state. A lot of people go home to their home areas when they're not working and in times of crises. So you're going to see a lot of transfer between places. And again, without that testing in every place, we're not going to know who has the most cases. We referred to it earlier about Mardi Gras. It was obviously spreading during that time. And, you know, as the individual said earlier, you weren't only passing beads, you were probably passing coronavirus too. So New Orleans is definitely of major concern right now, as are many other cities. And that's going to spread out to the countryside as well, because it's common and natural human behavior that if you're in a major urban city that's undergoing a crisis, you're going to want to get out to your family that may live in the country. Side. So we can't call anywhere low risk right now. Well, Hoda, good morning to you. Of course, we recognize the French Quarter, but we have not seen it quite like this. Here on Bourbon Street, not only are the businesses closed, they are boarded up, not a person in sight. But now experts believe that this area may play a large role in those exploding cases that we're seeing now, thanks to one of the biggest parties of the year, Mardi Gras. Across Louisiana, the numbers are simply staggering. It scared me. I'm telling you, it's like I screamed. It's like you're kidding me. The state has seen the fastest growth rates in the world. On Thursday, the numbers soared to more than 2,300 coronavirus cases and 83 deaths. If this spread continues on its current path, could Louisiana start to look like Spain or Italy? Absolutely. And New Orleans is taking the biggest blow. In Orleans Parish, nearly a thousand cases with 46 dead. Now experts are pointing to one major factor, Mardi Gras. People are drinking and sharing glasses. They're, sh they're throwing beads off of floats. And unfortunately, they weren't, people weren't only catching beads who were here for Mardi Gras, they were catching coronavirus. Oliver Stokes, a popular New Orleans DJ, was riding one of those floats last month. Nearly two weeks later, he started feeling sick. He was the comforter, he was the provider. Doctors ordered no visitors because of the virus. In his final hours, Oliver's wife, Cassandra, couldn't even be by his side. I couldn't hold his hand. I couldn't tell him I love him, nothing. So that was the hardest part for me, is that I couldn't be with him. Across New Orleans, the heartache shows no mercy. Jay Banks lost three friends in a single day. Two died still awaiting test results. It is crazy. Three people dead within three hours, all of which who were living very vibrant, very, very, very fulfilling lives, and now they're gone. Gone, too, are the crowded restaurants, the bustling French Quarter, so much of the city's soul and its livelihood. It's not normal. Is it, is, and is it going to ever get back? On Thursday, a message of hope from New Orleans Saints quarterback Drew Brees, who donated $5 million to help his city, writing, let's all do our part, maintain hope, and get through this together. Most people are listening and staying home, but for those few exceptions, Cassandra has this warning. They still don't get it. When it hits them, they will, because it's a life-changing experience. And the governor this morning is warning that the state will run out of hospital beds in less than two weeks, Hoda. So now the convention center is being prepared as a backup to possibly house patients there. For many, it's recalling memories of the response to Hurricane Katrina back in 2005. Hoda. All right.